Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our very first week of Hide and Seek. Who loves playing Hide and Seek? Me too! You know what, Ben? When I was a kid, I would play Hide and Seek with my cousins at my grandparents' Whoa. house. Whoa! Yes, my favorite place to hide was under the couch. That's a, that's a great hiding place, mm -hmm. Michelle. And just like Michelle did that with her cousins, for the next four weeks, we get to play a super fun version of hide and seek. We've hidden some pictures and objects around the room. Now to you will be on the screen and we need you to help us point them out and search for them. So we can tell the amazing true Bible story. But before we get started with today's part of the big Bible story though, let's go back all the way to the beginning and see if you guys can remember what has happened so far. Uh, there's just one problem though. I forgot the blue envelope. Hmm. Oh, here it is, Michelle. Look at that. You guys got the first one. Okay, now let's see what the first picture is. Can you guys oh. see what this is? That's right, it was the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Are you guys ready for the second one? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and sin entered into the world. Okay, this next one is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide what it says on top and see if we can see if Ben can get it. Oh, that's an old man. Who do you think it is? With a stick. I'm gonna go Abraham. You're right, it's Abraham. He made a promise to Abraham that there would be as many people in, the, in his family as there are stars in the sky. From Abraham's family, the Israelites would come to rescue, be, who would come a rescuer who would save us from sin. Whoa. Okay, I got another guy for you. It's for me. Yeah, I'm gonna cover him too. Okay. Um, another old man. Yeah. Can you guys see? Moses. You're right. Wow. While in Egypt, Pharaoh made the Israelites into slaves, but God used Moses to lead them across the Red Sea and out of Egypt. And yet another person. Can you oh, can I you know this guy. Is? Who's King this guy? Saul. You're right, King Saul. After wandering in the desert for 40 years, the Israelites finally made it to the promised land where they demanded to have a king just like all of their neighbors. And our second last. Oh, those are the prophets. You're right, the prophets. Just like God had warned, the kings led God's people away from him. So God's prophets turned them back and to tell them about the coming savior. Oh. Okay, and... Our last one. Who is this cutie? Oh, that is uh, the baby. Mm -hmm. We recently celebrated yep. the birth of a, of a baby. Yep. Uh, Jesus? Look at that. Good job, Ben. After 400 years of silence, Jesus, the savior spoke of by the prophets was born. Okay. So now that we've gone through our whole review, let's get our story started for today. I need you to find a boat. Hmm, hmm, do you see the boat? Where is it? Michelle, do you see it? I don't yet. Uh, oh, right here. Uh, one day, Jesus told a fisherman named Simon to take his boat to deeper waters and to throw out his nets and catch some fish. Simon said, we've been fishing all night and haven't caught a thing, but if you say so, I'll do it. So Simon threw his nets into the water and when they began to pull them back into the boat, there were a ton of fish in it. Okay, now I need you guys to find a net. Do hmm. you guys see the net? Oh. Do you see it, Ben? Uh, oh, it's right here. There it is. The nets began to strain under all the weight. There were so many fish that the nets actually started to break apart. Simon's friends, James and John, had to help him pull it out into the boat. It was a miracle. Simon knew right away that Jesus was no ordinary man. Now I need you guys to help us find a fishing pole. Hmm. Is it over here? Hmm. Is it over here? Oh, do you see it, Michelle? It is, right there. Wow, perfect. Okay, Simon thought Jesus was so special, he told Jesus he shouldn't even be around him. Hmm. But instead of sending Simon away, Jesus said, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That is Jesus' way of saying he was going to teach Simon and his friends how to catch people and teach them about Jesus. So Simon and his friends began to follow Jesus wherever he went. These were Jesus' first ever disciples, but Jesus didn't stop there. 
Now I need you to find some coins. Ooh. Coins. Coins. I want to find the coins. Mm -hmm. Where are the coins? Can you see them? Not in my wallet. I know that. <laughs> Not in mine either. <laughs> oh, here they are. There they are. Do you see them? You found them. Later, Jesus met a tax collector named Matthew. Tax collectors were blah. Ugh. People didn't like them. A lot of them would steal people's money, but Jesus wasn't looking for the most popular people. So he invited Matthew to be his disciple too. In all, Jesus invited 12 people to be his disciples. There was Simon, who then later changed his name to Peter, his brother Andrew, two brothers named James and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, and Matthew the tax collector, another James, Jude, Simon the Zealot, and Judas. These were the 12 regular people who didn't think they were anything special, but Jesus chose them to follow him and change the world. Were any of you surprised by Jesus's pick of who his disciples would be? Jesus could have chosen anyone he wanted, the smartest, the richest, or even the most popular. Instead, he chose ordinary people to follow him. Did you know that Jesus is still asking people to follow him? And guess what? He wants you. Mm -hmm. It's true. He wants you to follow him. He doesn't care that you're not the tallest kid around or that you haven't made it to the sixth grade yet. Jesus doesn't care if you're the smartest or the most popular kid. Do you know what Jesus does care about? He cares about what your heart. Jesus is looking for people who love him and want to make him the most important thing in their life. In fact, that's exactly what our Bible verse tells us today. In Mark Chapter 1, verse 17. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Now, following Jesus means putting him first, but that won't always be easy. In fact, a lot of times Jesus asks us to do one of the hardest things ever. Do you know what it is? Jesus asks us to be different. Let me show you what we mean. On the count of three, I want you all at home to make a beep sound. And then Michelle and I, one of us is gonna make the beep sound where the other one isn't gonna make, is gonna make a different sound. But we're gonna do it really quietly. And we want you to figure out who it is. Ben, I think we should cover Ooh, our mouths so they right. can't tell who's doing it. Okay. All right, ready? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> beep. Did you figure out who, who was making the mystery noise? No? That's interesting. You couldn't really tell who was making the mystery sound because it wasn't loud enough, right? Let's try again. This time, the mystery sound effect person is going to be a little bit louder. Ooh. Are you guys ready? Okay, we're gonna make the same beep noises. Are you ready? On three. One, two, three. Beep. Did you guys figure it out? Did you see what happened? The louder person was, it, the easier it was to tell who they were. When, the, when that person was louder, more people heard the different sound. It was kind of like what Jesus wants us to do with the people in our neighborhoods and schools. When all of the people around us are making bad choices, Jesus wants us to be different, but not just in small, quiet ways. Jesus wants us to be different in big and bold ways. So how can you do that? Who can give me an example of how you can be different for Jesus in a good way? Pause the video right now and talk to those around you and tell them what you think. Those are some incredible ideas. This week, remember that Jesus is calling on you to follow him. Even though you might be a regular old kid, Jesus thinks that you are special and he wants you to follow him in a big and bold way. Let's thank Jesus right now for wanting ordinary people like us to follow him. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for this time together and we thank you that you have chosen us. Father, we just pray that we would be different, that we'd be, we would be that one kid in class who is kind and loving, that we would be the kid that doesn't swear, that we would be the kid that others go to when they need something. Father, we just thank you so much for choosing us, and we pray that we would make you proud. For we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, don't forget, guys, to do activity number one, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye, guys.